In this episode, we decode the AI enigma in project management, one survey, one statistic at a time. Hello and welcome back to the Project Management Podcast at pm-podcast.com. This is the live stream for episode number 498 and I'm Cornelius Fichtner. Thank you so much for joining us. As a reminder, as always at this point, this is a video episode. So if you're only getting audio, then visit pm-podcast.com slash 498 to play the video version. So. In today's digital age, artificial intelligence is transforming the landscape of project management, offering new insights and efficiencies. With Elizabeth Heron's article, 57 AI in Project Management Statistics, we will dive deep into the role AI is playing and will continue to play in our field, from automating mundane tasks to enhancing decision-making and project outcomes. AI's integration into project management is a game-changer. How much of a game-changer is it? What can you do to prepare? Well, Elizabeth has leveraged her experience to compile and analyze these 57 statistics, shedding light for you on the current and future impact of AI on our profession. Today, she joins us to dig deep into these findings and discuss how project managers can adapt and thrive in this environment. Elizabeth, welcome back to the program. Thank you very much for having me on the show today. <laughs> yes, we've had you here so many times, but there <laughs> may still be people who have never met you before. So here's a quick introduction of Elizabeth Herron. She is an APM fellow with over 20 years of experience in project management and uh, a seasoned professional known for her roles at prominent organizations, uh, American Express, AXA, Aspire Healthcare, just to name a few. She holds a degree from the University of York and Roehampton University alongside numerous certifications. She has authored six books on project management and contributes extensively to the field as a speaker and blogger. Her work emphasizes the human aspect of project delivery, advocating for competency, confidence, and ethical leadership in the profession. And I think uh, worth mentioning, that's the URL that you see here at the bottom of uh, her bio, is that her business has seen a rebranding since we last had her on the interview. You can now find her at Rebels Guide to Project Management. So anyone interested can visit rebelsguidetopm.com for her courses and for her services. Elizabeth, my, my first question for you, a bit more general. Uh, in our interview, we will be focusing on the research that you did in all these statistics, these surveys, and the article we wrote about it. What was the initial spark that inspired you to compile these AI-related statistics in the project management field? Well, there's a lot of chatter in the project management world at the moment, isn't there, about the importance of AI and the impact that AI is going to have on our jobs. And I imagine there is similar conversations happening in lots of industries. So I wanted to see what project management uh, people and experts were thinking about AI and how big of an impact there really was going to be and what we should be getting ourselves prepared for. So that's what prompted me to take a look at some of this research. Great, because that's exactly what we are going to do. Uh, and uh, if you do have a question, remember we are live, uh, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. If you have a question, please do use the chat and I will bring up your question here live on air for Elizabeth. What I have done is I have taken Elizabeth's article and I have divided it up into five themes that I feel are important and uh, of interest to us project managers. And the first one is the impact of AI on project management roles. Here we want to explore how AI is changing the role of project managers, including the skills that are needed. So first question for Elizabeth, your article mentions that AI eliminates 80% of busy work by 
2030. I believe that is a Gartner survey, a Gartner analysis uh, that we have there. Can you give us a few examples? What type of busy work are we talking about here that's going to be eliminated? We're talking about things like data collection, status updates, uh, drafted communications, reporting, uh, meeting minutes, creating those meeting minutes or creating summaries from meeting minutes. So a lot of those admin data narrative type tasks can be replaced by AI today with the tools that are already out there. And later on, we might see some more project activities being AI influenced by AI, like data analysis, requirements gathering, and then um, risk analysis as well. So there's quite a lot of things where um, project managers are crunching the data or gathering data sources and information sources from other people and then summarizing and synthesizing that, that I think AI could take start doing the heavy lifting for us. Mm -hmm. And doing it very quickly, which means, you know, we probably have more time, which means AI potentially changes project management roles and the actual work that we will be doing. So what key skills do you think will still be needed or will be more needed in the future from a project manager? Well, this is really interesting because I thought I would be saying stakeholder engagement, team leadership, culture, all the stuff that I normally talk about, um, the human aspects of project management. But actually, the the surveys and things that I read said the things that are considered to be the most important that are non-technical skills are going to be things like uh, creative thinking, complex problem solving, data analysis. So I think for a human project manager, we need to not only do all of the soft skill stuff that the AI can't do for us, like those um, setting a good example, being an ethical leader and all that stuff, the stakeholder work and communication, but also have a new strand to our bow, which is all around what do we do with data? What does data analysis look like? How do we present information in a compelling way? And how do we interpret that information so we can take out the bias or that we can present the key statistics? And we're sort of adding a layer of human context to any of the data that AI is presenting. So I think that sort of problem solving, creative thinking, analysis skill set will become really important to us as project leaders mm -hmm. going forward. Yeah, if, if I look into your article, there was one thing that I found very interesting. It says, uh, interestingly enough, project management domains where there is low impact from AI are considered to be stakeholder management, project communication, and project budgeting. budgeting and oftentimes, yeah. when you look around and you look for use cases and where will AI help us, and so authors seem to actually focus on risk management, and then next on stakeholder, communication, project budgeting, all those things. Yet the statistics say, ah, no, that's the areas where we will not be seeing that much of a change. I find that very interesting right there. It is, yeah. isn't it? And I wonder if that's because right now, when people think of AI and what we're using it for, the use case is, oh, I went to chat GPT and I asked it to draft an email to my stakeholder because we're two weeks late. And which is great, especially if English isn't your first language. Um, but that is communication, stakeholder engagement. That's talking to people through written media that chat GPT has created for you. And there's almost that's a great starting point. But in terms of what the software could do or how we could integrate the tools into our own organizations, it, it could be so much bigger than that. Mm -hmm. I have a first comment coming in from Sushil Gupta, who happens to have been on the show last uh, in the last episode. Uh, he's back uh, lurking in uh, LinkedIn here, watching us. Wow, that's great to hear. 80% reduced. Uh, following up on that 80% reduction, uh, where do you think our role is going because 80 percent reduction it's means we have a lot more time to do other things so what are we going to do are we just going to be oh here have six more projects or is there a particular shift that we need to be expecting well it's interesting you say that about more projects because 44 percent of practitioners reported in a survey that they will think that they do think they're going to end up with more projects because organizations will ad adopt ai and therefore Technically, they should have more time to do things. But I wonder if it just means the role of project manager 
maybe not just, but it means the role of project manager is sort of elevated to strategic partner, to the, the right hand division of the CEO and the strategy team mm -hmm. in a way that historically some project managers have acted in that role. But there's no real standard definition of what a project manager is, is there? And if you look through job descriptions, you can see some roles that are actually quite administrative and task tracking. And hopefully those mm -hmm. kind of those kind of tasks will be the ones that we'll be able to ditch so that we can be um, more of a strategic influence, helping to choose the right projects, focusing on delivery and perhaps being less stressed, because I think there's an awful lot of project managers out there who are really strapped for time. Maybe AI yeah. will, will help us have a will help, have the help capacity that. As long, as, long as you don't get six new projects, there you go. <laughs> Let's I, hope I not. also think that if you take the role of a, shall we call them administrative project manager, somebody who manages documents and updates the schedule and does assignments and, and, and those kind of things, versus somebody who is more uh, strategic leadership and, 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 and works more on the human side of projects, I think that is a much more fulfilling role, which I think takes us into our next theme here, which I've titled the benefits of AI in project management, where we want to talk a little bit about concrete, uh, concrete advantages of using AI tools for project execution. So from, I, I know this is not specific to these statistics, but in your research, have you found any specific examples of AI tools that are currently used in product management? And, and what problems do they solve? My research has shown a, a very little, maybe a generative AI being baked into the tools. But beyond that, what have you found? Well, I found similar, to be honest, um, when you talk to project managers about how they're using AI, anecdotally, people tell me, oh, I have a chat GPT account, which is I, I do now, too. And it's actually really helpful. So I, I like it. But it is that generative AI. But there are some tools. I mean, do you want me to name some specific software tools that have got AI features baked in? Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Taskaidmonday.com. Ah, there were yeah. two more that I that I've looked at, and I've, um, I've looked at Tom's Planner, which is uh, yeah for, for scheduling. You just type in, "I want to create a project plan that will will put a man on the moon," and it just tells you it creates your whole schedule for you. So that's and that, awesome. it's basically generative AI behind. That's generative it, right? AI yes. behind. Yeah. Um, Asana has an AI feature that's drafting comments yes. and responses. Generative yeah. AI. Um, there's some workflows in tools like Nimble with automated suggestions for, you know, you did a project like this last year and you had this task, do you want to use it again? So those kind of features, I think we'll start to right. see more and more in, right. in the software that we use. And even it, things like summaries of conversations from Slack and Microsoft Copilot. Yeah, and Zoom also has this this feature with the, the built-in uh, AI that summarizes the meeting. Uh, let's be absolutely clear. I am not, or we are not, trying to diminish the work that has been done to integrate Gen AI into these tools and, and make it work. That alone is a fantastic step forward. It is just... It, it's simply not the fully integrated artificial intelligence support that the marketing and sales teams of those companies are already promising. It's just like, yeah, it'll generate an email for you that you can send out to your stakeholders. Wonderful, mm -hmm. right? But it is a very, very important first task. It's the first step, and I think AI will become more practical and useful to us when it moves inside our organizations. And I think a lot of you know, all the generative stuff is we're using ChatGPT, we're, we're building things on top of generative models, and that's great, but it does mean our information is kind of out there in the internet. So, you know, if you wanted to draft an email for you, you have to feed it with anonymized data, really, and then put the put the important company specific data back in afterwards because you don't want your company secrets feeding the model. So once AI tools and the, that kind of large data processing can come inside your firewall and you've got it in-house, I think it becomes a lot more um, 
useful and relevant to some of the work that mm -hmm. you might be doing. Yeah, I, I got two comments uh, along those lines. One is from a LinkedIn user. One concern with these AI tools is the privacy of data and the exactly. fact that they are not allowed in some companies due to intellectual property issues. I don't think we're going to actually talk about this. This is outside of the scope uh, of what we looked at. I believe ethical issues, however, are an adoption barrier that we'll get to. And then the second one, would that include some sort of refinement by AI tools? You, so is it going to be garbage in, garbage out? I think that is more about data quality. Uh, so data is a big topic and uh, uh, maybe a little bit outside of what we want to review right now. However, this oh. one here from, uh, go ahead, yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, the, the, the data is a really important one because if you're using your own internal data sets, then you can be sure that it's clean. You're right, no garbage in, garbage out. If you're just using generative AI that's available to you on the internet, all it's doing is searching the internet and summarizing some stuff. And if what's out there on the internet is rubbish, poorly researched, not really relevant, inherent with bias, then that's what you're pulling back. So it, it, data quality is, is really important. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, and because uh, this now takes me to this comment here from Marie Spark. Hi, Marie. Uh, nice to have you on board. Uh, since the administrative work used to be the entry point into the profession, how do you see the new first job in project management in this new environment? And I think this brings us straight to my question that I had for you about large language models. And let me make sure I get this right here, because your article mentions that large language models, LLMs, they benefit the less experienced project manager. So in combination with Marie, what Marie is saying, how do you, uh, how does this work, right? So we're taking away the administrative work, yet the large language model seems to benefit the less experienced project manager. Um, how, how does this combine? Where, where do you see that going? I think it's a question of timing because Marie's absolutely right. If we look forward 10 years, what does the entry level job look like? If you're building your tool set so that it's automating all the reports, it's updating everything automatically for you, there's workflows, what does a junior project manager or a PMO analyst actually do all day and do those jobs even exist? And if they don't exist, how do you get to be a senior project manager because you'll never have had any of the experience? So that's a really interesting career question about what that entry level job might look like. The good news is it's certainly not happening today. So that's where the large, lang large language models come into play because one of the studies I looked at said they help the least experienced project managers the, the most and least experienced staff show a 43% improvement in performance when they've got access to tools that will help them because they can type in things like, what are my options for mitigating a risk? And you can get back some decent answers. Whereas 17% of performance improvement was shown by the experienced staff so they obviously need less support so the large language models a chat gpt style tool that you've got available for your more junior members of staff can be like a bit of a, a mentor or a coach a, on a technical basis because they can ask it questions and get back some really interesting useful tailored responses to the situation that they're in what it looks like for entry-level jobs in 10 years i don't know but i think that's that's quite worrying for us as as uh, people trying to plan career paths for people coming up into the profession. Mm -hmm. I've heard uh, similar discussions around support agents where AI, generative AI, large language models really help the inexperienced support agents, the ones that are brand new, and help bring them up to speed very quickly because they help live as you are working on a ticket for a customer, bringing up relevant articles, relevant potential responses to the question that your customer has. So for a small, for a small, for an inexperienced project manager, if a large language model is by your side, it will act almost like a project management mentor, helping you, bringing you up to speed, explaining to you, oh, this is the process that we use at this point in our project. So yes, I can definitely see that this is very, very helpful. Yeah. I wonder if the you, route in, in the future yeah. will be more in through a PMO route or maybe through data analysis, because that's going to be really cool. People who can program these models, use the data, think creatively about what problems we're trying to solve 
with all the mm -hmm. data that we have and then move into project leadership in a in a later role anyway it'd be interesting let's come back in 10 years and, right. and see if anything's yeah. changed at all yeah. uh, let's go from the inexperienced product manager to the senior project manager the, the 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 really senior project manager because your article also states or rather the statistics say that uh, complex projects are benefiting more from AI than the simple, less complex projects. Um, why do we think that is? I think, I mean, that really stood out to me when I was looking through all of these studies, mm. that the complex projects benefit more, and it comes down to having more data. So the larger your data set for research and analysis, the more AI-powered tech makes it easy for you to sift through all of that data. So if you've got you know, a construction project, you've got loads and loads of quality measures, for example, you can surface trends really easily. So there might be um, that kind of processing that's happening that allows you to really make an improvement. And you perhaps would have taken a lot longer to have got to the, the core of the problem because you would have had to be crunching all of those numbers by hand. So I think that IT and technology projects, they generate an awful lot of data. And the research from APM says they're most likely to see a benefit from AI, but I think, you know, construction, legal projects, anything that has lots of, amount, lots of historical data that can be processed and lots of data that's relevant to this project allows us to surface interactions between projects, between clients um, within projects as well. So the more complex your project ecosystem, if you like, the, the more data points you've got. And then you could do things like, tell me about the lessons learned on this project with this particular client over the past five years what do i need to not make a mistake on this time and just just there's that richness there that helps with whereas small projects smaller stakeholder groups maybe one-off things don't, don't have that history all right um one question came in here from thomas about the tool that you mentioned for ai scheduling and then uh thank you harding who answered it and said, it's Tom's Planner. Interesting that Thomas didn't catch the name of Tom's Planner, unless we have Thomas actually as the developer of the tool no, uh, right there. I don't think tool. so. I mean, I'm not affiliated with any of the tools I mentioned. Yes, so, other planning you know, tools just... are available. <laughs> right. But that one was... Let us... yep. Let's move on to our theme number three out of five here. This is about barriers to AI adoption in project management. When we want to talk a little bit about challenges the organizations face when implementing AI solutions, we've already heard about uh, privacy being an issue. And there we have, uh, again, Harding, who said, from my own experience, I worked for a major large telco, which invested in its own chat GPP, OpenM, and large language model, data privacy solved. So if you do it internally, uh, the, yeah, your data privacy is solved because you're not giving the data away. So uh, Elizabeth, according to the statistics, with only 22% of project management, uh, project managers, excuse me, currently using AI tools, so that's one fifth. Uh, what do you think is actually hindering the wider adoption here? I think there probably are two prongs to this. All the classic barriers to adopting any new technology, like limited funding, senior support, user adoption, all the things that we classically see on projects when we're doing change management and trying to make a project land, that's all going to affect organizations adopting new ways of working. So that will hold back AI's progression in companies. But there's other limitations as well, like they're very expensive and there's a huge carbon burden. So offsetting carbon, for example, is, is something that many organizations are looking at now on their journey to carbon zero. And do you really want that many servers crunching data for you. But I think the biggest thing for me is why? Why are we doing it? What's the problem that we're trying to solve? And if you can't answer that question of why do we want to use AI within our organization? What's the benefit to us? Then it just becomes another shiny object that people will go, oh, that sounds cool. Should we try that? Oh, look, it's a lot of work and we have to cleanse all our data and there's ethical concerns and blah, blah, blah. So let's not do it just yet. So I think there's limited financial resources, lack of clear strategy, and all of those things around, do we really want to do it? Why are we doing it? And putting together that really clear business case. But it'd be very interesting to hear 
uh, from the people who are listening to this live or adding comments after the event um, what what they thought barriers to adoption would be because I'm sure different organizations are coming up against different challenges mm -hmm. I I'd like to take it into a, a, a different direction for, for just a second, because in my opinion, there are two types of AI products. One is the AI-driven product management. That's what we've been talking about so far, where we project managers use AI tools to support our projects, our teams, the processes, and managing our projects better. But then there is also the other side where you as the project manager are asked to bring AI capabilities into your company. For example, your support organization, your finance team, your sales team are looking to enhance their, uh, their departments with AI capabilities. And has any of the statistics that you've looked at talked about uh, adoption in that regard, bringing AI capabilities as a project manager to other departments and, and how, how, how the adoption is over there? Uh, there was some statistics about types of project, data projects, which now you've got ah, now yes. I can't can't remember right. what the I, number is. I, I actually, uh, let's see. Uh, you have, I, to I, have I, it to I, hand. I, I'm looking for it as we talk. Yeah, there was something about that. And it, it was, uh, let me paraphrase this. It was about, there we go. Uh, no, that's analyze large data. It, it was about the fact that the companies were launching a lot more data projects mm -hmm. and projects where um, they will use data as the basis for future strategic decisions. If I got this right yes. in my head That's here, exactly was that it? Yes. Yeah. So there's more projects being launched now than there have been previously around data analysis. So setting up databases, creating ways of articulating that data, creating reports around it, so all that kind of what do we do with our data type projects of things that we could be getting involved with as project managers. So that's certainly another way that we might see AI creeping into what we do all day because we'll be helping other departments implement the tools and techniques, working practices and reports that will enable us to you know, be, be better as an organization and meet our strategic goals more quickly. Comment from Sushil, AI is doing a great job, but on the other hand, it reduces the efficiency of humans in terms of logical thinking, process, remembering capacity is reduced day by day. What is your take on this? I actually, I actually have a slightly different thought here. Um, I believe this is all about... This is all about decision support. While the AI can help me to develop potential scenarios on how to mitigate a risk, it is still up to me as the human to look at this and think it through. So if you are somebody who just goes, oh, that's a great idea. We'll just implement what the AI has said here. Then I, I fully agree with you, Sushil. That is not what should be happening. We're talking here about explainable AI almost. Why did the AI come up with this particular solution for this scenario? Is it ethical? Is it even useful? I think all of those considerations, a human has to make. Um, Elizabeth, where do you stand on this one? I think it's a, it's a good point. I mean, to be honest, perimenopause is affecting my ability to remember day to day anyway. So the fact that we can use AI to create some workflows and checklists, automate processes is a good thing because the more we can standardize and push through automatically, the, the less we have to remember, which should give us more capacity to do things in a standard way, repeatable across a department, but also exactly as you've just said Cornelius our job is to put the sense check in place the AI comes out with the answer it says we might say to it what are the top five lessons from the previous projects or what are the things I could do to mitigate this risk that haven't failed in the past and it will give us some answers and then we'll look down at it and go no you must be joking I'm not going to do that one or oh that's a fantastic idea but I need to run it past my steering committee first and then 
that's where that value hopefully comes in. So the logical thinking is you, still used, but in a slightly different way. All right. Thank you. Um, to remind everybody, we are still talking about adoption barriers here in our uh, uh, list of five themes. I'd like to stay here for one final thing. And uh, uh, yes, as you can see the picture in the background here, it's a product manager uh, taking a bridge to steps into AI. And then on the, in the background, you see all these potential adoption barriers with all the typos that ChatGPT managed to get into this image here. And one of them there is, it's supposed to say ethical. It has, a, has two L's. So let's, let's talk about ethics quickly. Um, because the article does discuss ethical concerns as a barrier. Uh, Elizabeth, how can project managers ensure responsible and ethical use of AI tools in their projects? I think just by being aware that it is a concern gives you a head start to thinking about how we can address it. So be aware that what comes out of your AI tool might need some refinement and be aware of what is going into your AI tool. So similar to as we discussed earlier on, if you're using the World Wide Web as your source material, there is inherent bias in the information that you might be pulling back. But if you're using your in-house data, you would hope that perhaps it's a little bit more clean and relevant to the work that you're doing. So ask questions, use your critical thinking skills, analyze the data, find out where it's come from, is it representative, and then create some policies, approval frameworks, and just basically be a bit skeptical, really. And then those internal standards and boundaries will help. And also making sure your project teams are diverse and that when data comes out, we're, we're sense checking it with a wide range of stakeholders so that we can be confident. I think being aware of that bias is the first step, really, to asking the right questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have two words for you in regards to ethics, and that is principles and frameworks. If you have good AI and project management principles and you follow those with an appropriate framework, then even the most complex issue becomes relatively easy because we have this principle, we follow this principle, and it doesn't matter how difficult the situation is. This is our principle. This is the way we do it. This is what we follow. Only problem here is that there is no globally recognized AI in project management set of principles or frameworks at this time. Uh, there is a 29, uh, 2019, 2020 uh, research that has been done about uh, the, the principles, the landscape of, of principles and frameworks. And the list that I have seen is almost 100 in size. And uh, I've looked at them. They're, they, they're all pointing in a very similar direction. And the principles that there are, are very good and very solid. So you can use pretty much any of the publicly available frameworks and, and lists of principles that you have. Uh, the EU uh, has one, then the uh, United States government uh, intelligence community has one very well done. And I believe US government documents are public domain, don't quote mm -hmm. me on that, and you may be able to even use that as a basis to develop your own in-house uh, ethical guidelines and uh, framework in order to, to make sure that you are doing all of this ethically. From here, we are moving from adoption barriers over to the future of project management in AI. And I'd like us to start here with the comment from Anna. I think there will be a lot of resistance from people within companies when implementing AI tools, as there is currently a general fear and the unknown nature of how it will change jobs. Initially, people will fear their jobs with the incorporation of AI, so the messaging around it and how the changes navigated will be vital. I believe this is, in fact, one of the areas where our job as project managers is changing. Again, remember, there are two types of AI projects, using AI on your project, AI-driven project management, and AI implementation projects. So this comment is about an AI 
implementation project. My job as project manager is going to change because now the fear of people losing their jobs because we're bringing AI capability is going to be even greater. So how do I prepare for that situation? It will come. It is inevitable. This situation will come. Even if you use AI tools on your own projects, one of your team members is going to be concerned is AI, are those tools going to replace my job, make me redundant? How do you prepare for that? You have to understand all the basics, the frameworks, the ethics behind it. Uh, your own project, what is the mission and vision of your company? And then, how do you respond? What words do you use that are empathic, empathetic enough, that, that show empathy and are correct because you don't want to lie to people if somebody is actually going to lose their job you have to be up honest up front with them right so all of those considerations we can't forget that is how our job is going to change in regards to that um elizabeth what are some other areas where you would see changes uh, to our jobs I think that's a great thing that you've just said there around the change management that we have to put in place, the closer working relationships with any change managers we have in our organisation and HR teams to make sure that if roles are changing, that's built into the project plan and that we fully understand and can communicate it. But in terms of how our actual jobs as project leaders might change, it's going to be quite interesting to see how that evolves. I think it's going to affect decision making and that data analysis, and it's probably going to affect which projects are started because. I'd like to think that we could make better decisions about which projects get kicked off, which projects get stopped. So the roles that are involved in project selection, like PMO roles, um, might change as well. So we've got that upfront step of discovery around what projects are we actually going to, to kick off. Um, and I know that the, the point that just got raised there was around people being worried. And there was an interesting survey that looked at how worried are project managers? And it said 29% of project managers are worried about AI taking over their jobs now. But if you think about what it's going to be like in 15 years, that number goes up to 40%. So in terms of are people losing sleep this week about the fact that AI is going to come and take their job? No, it's gen generally not the case. But because there's so much uncertainty around what does it look like to have those tools? What problems are we trying to solve with those tools? And are those problems the kind of problems I solve for my organization myself now? Because we don't know the answers to that yet, I think the, the fear factor ramps up in the future. Mm -hmm. I like to put people's mind at rest and say, I am prepared to put, put it out there that I don't think project managers will be unemployed in 10 years time because of AI. I think our roles might be different. We might have less time spent on all the boring stuff, like the things I think are boring, <laughs> like collating status reports and preparing PowerPoint decks. Uh, but some of those things could be perhaps automated or, or communicated in a different way. Uh, but that just means we've got more time for the, for the better stuff, the value added stuff, the things around working with our teams, solving difficult problems, brainstorming, facilitating, creating a culture where people can do their best work. So I, I think, yes, the role will change, but it's, it's different roles are going to change in different ways. Mm -hmm. I've uh, received a few comments here about, so what do we do? Where do we go? Where do we start? Uh, we have another theme coming up in just a moment uh, about how to get started and all that. We're still talking about the future of AI and product management right now. And I'd like to focus on, uh, on an important uh, aspect as well, money. Yes. Where do you see salaries going? What, what do the surveys say? It was quite hard, actually. I did look for survey data because obviously money is a big thing for all of us. We want to make sure that, that that's still there. So the, I, I think if you search for AI project manager jobs, there aren't that many positions advertised. So there's not an awful lot of aggregated data available around how much people get paid to be an AI project manager, whatever that job title means. Um, but it's comparative to a senior project manager a more experienced project manager job in terms of pay from the, from the job adverts and the sur surveys I looked at. So I think it's it's not going to affect salaries. Do I dare I say that? Um, <laughs> but the skill set people were looking for in a project manager may may well change because they're looking for more data analysis, creative thinking, problem solving type skills. 
So interesting. What do you think? It can go either way. Uh, you know, uh, where is my my magic ball here, or my my glass ball, and my tarot cards? Um, it, it could go either way. It could go one way, saying, "Oh, we're not paying you as much because, well, <laughs> the AI is doing all the work that you used to do." But on the other hand, it could also be, "I'm asking for more money because I am now a much more qualified person. I am no longer this low-level administrative person who manages your documents. I am a." strategic leader. I am at the same level as your C-level executives in the type of products that I'm leading. I'm actually going to ask for more money. So I think it it it, it depends is probably the better, or the best answer, the, 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 always the best answer. Um, it depends on your own situation and where you are at in your particular stage of your career right there. Um, I'm seeing another comment coming in from uh, Larding that I find is very interesting, uh, interesting take. I have recently taken a short course from a uh, leading priority management institution, wonder which one that might be, uh, that at some point said that the project manager was responsible for the quality of the data being consumed. Uh, I would say the, the quality of the training data being used, uh, if I understand this correctly, large language models, etc. This is scary and saying to put the product manager's responsibility for this. Uh, actually, I don't think so, Harding. I think this is just one new responsibility that we are going to have in the future. Think back about 15, uh, 20 years when, uh, when sustainability wasn't part of the discussion. Nowadays, making sure that our projects support sustainability, that's just par for the course. We're no longer considering this to be, oh, why do I have to worry about that now? And so 10, 15 years from now, our job will include sustainability, ethics, uh, data quality. That is just part of what we do as project managers and so making sure that the quality of the data is up there that is what we need to be doing elizabeth well i agree with harding i think our job is to oh. facilitate the data quality as in we would make sure that the project plan includes activities to make sure the data right. is a re relative quality but we are not the owners of the data because we don't own the data. The data is coming from customer service sales or marketing or somewhere else. And we're not going to own it after we move away from this project and go and work on something else. So I think the overall ownership of the data quality needs to sit with a business owner. And all we're responsible for is making sure that that topic is considered within our project planning and the relative appropriate actions are taken to get it to a data quality position that is suitable for the project. So I suppose mm -hmm. it's a bit of both. But I think what Harding's saying is it, it's it's not our the data is not our responsibility longer term and i think i agree with that mm -hmm. i totally agree with that as well the ownership of the data is whoever creates the data but when we use this data to train an ai model making sure that it has uh, yes. high quality and it follows the core uh, the, the core areas where data quality is defined, that is my job as the project manager, because otherwise garbage in, garbage out. And I think Harding here goes with ultimately responsible. So if we want to divide this up, the ultimate ownership stays with the business, but the quality for uh, the, the, the ownership of making sure that the, the data has the appropriate quality, that's ours. I would think so. And isn't it interesting that we've just had that conversation in two minutes as, a, as and it's a very sensible question that's been asked is where does the responsibility sit? And one of the things we're going to have to do is build out racy matrices, build out roles and responsibilities, put the governance framework and the right people in place because organizations all around the world will be having these conversations like whose problem is it that the data is missing this character or we haven't got any data from that country? And we're going to have to work this out and facilitate those discussions in-house. Mm. Right. So from the future of AI in project management, we are moving on to 
getting started with AI and project management. So we're looking here for practical advice for project managers who want to leverage AI tools. And I think the comment that we have here from Elvia Martinez uh, kind of summarizes it. How can project managers prepare to acquire the necessary skills to use AI in the current and future industry demands to use AI for a strategic approach. And I think Elvia, Elvia, Elvia has uh, hit the, uh, the, 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 the nail on the head, strategic approach. As a project manager, you have to start looking beyond the tools. Don't worry about where do I need to click in order to get something done, because if I had told you 20 years ago, you now need to start using the internet, you would have gone, oh my God, what is the internet? How do I use this? Where, what, when, how? The browser, search engines, what, what, what? And right now, that I believe is probably there, the fear that some of us may have. Where do I click? How does this function work? What exactly is it? Over time, it will become second nature. You will know exactly how to use the AI tools, techniques, and functions that are built into your tools. But then, where do you get the necessary skills to do the bigger things? So, Elizabeth, what does a project manager need to focus on these days in order to be able in the future to integrate AI effectively into their day-to-day -day work? I think it's a, a new set of technical skills or things that we perhaps haven't put that much focus on in the past of data analysis, um, creative thinking, business acumen. So you can uh, so you can be the human that applies the business context over the data that's created by AI. Presentation skills. So, I mean, what what data are we servicing? How do we say what the facts, how do we present the facts in a way that tells the story and that, that really gets across the message and the, the things that we're trying to share with our stakeholders? And questioning, you know, having the confidence as a project professional to question the data, to question the senior leaders and to speak truth to power, really. So when someone comes and says, this is the report, and therefore we're going to do X, Y, Z, you can say, why? What if we interpreted it that way? Have we considered this other factor? And I think that's, you know, the, the confidence of being able to challenge is something that comes with experience and age a bit and just, you know, being in a culture that supports that challenge. So that's something I think people could work on. And being able to craft a good prompt. I mean, as a practical skill, what you type into ChatGPT needs to be good enough to get you the answers that you need. So having a, creating an account and having a bit of a practice as to what gives you good results back is, is something an easy way to start oh analytical thinking there's there are so many things but but it's it's that i think it's that um, data literacy i guess data as well. literacy um being able to understand the data as it's presented to you uh, asking the right questions and about knowing the data. what right yeah we had a bit of a hiccup there there was a bit of a delay so uh, we did not hear what you said after data literacy would you uh, knowing what uh, questions you, to ask about the data what Okay, okay, got it. Tell me more questions to ask of the data. All right. Um, how about fear? How about overcoming the fear? Uh, the fear of what are these tools? How do I use these tools? As well as, is this going to replace me? How, how would you suggest we overcome this? Well, the change is slow. I think um, something I, I realized when I wrote my first, well, one of my first books, the, the the one about social media for project managers. I was talking about something then back at the day that felt very new and innovative and radical. And then we rewrote the book to be collaboration tools for project managers when more and more people started to use technology at work, going back a bit now. But even then, project management collaboration tools did not become the de facto way of doing business until the coronavirus pandemic when we were all forced to. So if you think back, the, the technology was available for years before it became the standard way of working. And I think we might see the same with AI because often you'll see that technology is adopted by consumers and by other areas of the business before it hits project management teams. We do tend to be perhaps a little bit slower on the uptake of new technology sometimes. Uh, so I think in terms of how it's going to change our roles, the change is coming. 
but we are in a profession that is very good at change and I don't think we need to get stressed out about it. So I think if we look at what's happening, we try to stay up to date with the industry. Um, we are aware and prepared to learn and enthusiastic about what that change might bring and open to the possibility that it's a good thing then I think we can overcome some of that fear in ourselves and also in our team members too, because obviously lots of us are leading teams and that could be quite yeah. scary for others as well. Yeah, you probably saw me picking up my phone and, and, and doing something on my phone because I just realized, but based on what you're saying, it, it's, it's sneaking in everywhere. And I just remembered, you know, I've seen this little strange button there in, in WhatsApp and just by looking at it, is, is that an AI functionality that's being built, baked into WhatsApp now? So, you know, your, your phones are going to bring AI right literally <laughs> at your fingertips and will get be more and more knowledgeable about what these tools do and, and how we can use them. What about our teams, Elizabeth? How do we help our teams? with using artificial intelligence on our projects? I think one of the things we can do is lobby for some time and some training to give people more confidence in what the tools really mean and the time to practice with them. So if you've got the option to influence how people spend their time, or if you have training budget within your projects, then that's one of the things you could be asking for. So knowing how to drive those AI solutions will make your job easier when the time comes. And in, in the, the surveys that I read said most project managers have say that they haven't been provided with adequate training. So one of the things that we can proactively do is ask for the training and then make sure that our teams have got the time to put that, put that learning into practice. All right, thank you very much. Which means we are done with the five themes that I had prepared, and we are coming uh, here to the takeaways. So, Elizabeth, after doing all that research and looking at the statistics, what are your personal takeaways and that you have? And do you also have any final thoughts or advice for project managers who may be hesitant, apprehensive about this whole thing? I think the, the takeaways that I had was that AI is not going to take your job. It, the, the job will change, but I think we should be feeling quite confident that project delivery is still something that's going to need a big aspect from, from humans. So that's that's coming. Um, I think the second takeaway was from, it, from me was the more complex your project, the more you're likely to benefit from AI. So if you run very small projects, maybe it's not something to worry about just yet. And the third takeaway was if you have less experience in the field, then there are some really great tools out there that can be your technical mentor and, and live, give you some information about how to better do your job. And that might build your confidence quickly. Um, but in terms of final, final thoughts, I think AI will continue to dominate project delivery conversations. We're, we've been talking about it for a while. We'll still continue to talk about it. And it's going to be embedded in the way that projects are scoped and delivered. And hopefully, they, it will remove some of the tasks that are perhaps add less value um, and it will support informed decisions. But I think perhaps what we should take away from all of this is how do we want AI to impact project management rather than just let it happen to us? What conversations do we need to be driving within our organisations? What projects do we need to be suggesting that are kicked off so that we can really be on the front foot with this and shape how the technology evolves so that it gives us the best results? You know, I don't think I've anybody have heard anybody say this before. Uh, yeah, what do we want it to be? That is a, a very good thought and a very good close. Thank you so much. Elizabeth, it has once again been a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. All right. Everybody, thank you so much for being here and for the really good comments. I apologize if there were any that I was unable to get to during our conversation right here. Please visit pm-podcast slash uh, pm-podcast.com slash 498 for show notes, transcripts, and PDU information. Yes, you can earn PDUs for watching or listening to this particular episode. It's going to be about 0.75 PDU in the power skills category. Our email address is info at pm-podcast.com. And of course, 
If this interview has inspired you and you are looking for a training course about AI that is specifically designed for you, the project manager, then I have artificial intelligence for project managers for you. Please go ahead and visit pm-prepcast.com slash AI to take a look at what my course offers. And finally, we have this. Statistics don't lie. And AI makes them more convincing. With that, until next time, everyone.